Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Before we continue with our story, we have a short message for grown-ups. Our son loves to learn at his own pace and on his own time, with topics that he finds most interesting and valuable. Our sponsor, OutSchool, has played an important part in supporting his love of learning. OutSchool offers an incredible variety of affordable, live, interactive online classes for kids, pre-K through high school. Classes are fun and cover every interest you can think of, and some you can't, like video game design, playing an instrument, speaking a language, creative writing, and so much more. OutSchool has helped our son continue to be excited about learning and they can help your kids too. To learn more about all OutSchool has to offer and to save $15 off your child's first class, go to outschool.com slash sleep tight and use the code sleep tight. That's code sleep tight at O-U-T-S-C-H-O-O-L dot com slash sleep tight to save $15 off your child's first class. Outschool.com slash sleep tight. This story is about a guinea pig named Percival. Percival is bored and feeling lonely. He doesn't think he has been fed or pet in a really long time. So he decides to go looking for his owner. Percival gets out of his cage and goes on an amazing adventure. Let's see how it goes. Charlotte's guinea pig. Though he lived in a great big house with all kinds of entertainment, a spinning wheel, and places to crawl under, Percival was bored, and as was often the case, he was hungry. He wasn't very good with time, but it seemed like an eternity since he had been talked to, given a pet, and fed treats. So Percival decided to take matters into his own hands and go in search of his owner and maybe have a little fun on the way. But first, he had to find the way to go outside of his home. Percival, like many guinea pigs, doesn't have particularly strong eyesight, but they do have amazing memories. So Percival sat and thought, and thought, and thought. Where was that door that always opened? Then he remembered and scampered and jumped with excitement towards the door and hit it with a thump, which caused the door to open. Someone had forgotten to close it properly. All the better for Percival. Percival slowly walked out the door and froze. He was kind of nervous, as he had never been outside alone before. But he summoned up his courage and took one step, then two steps, then three, and then he fell. He didn't see that his home was on a table and didn't notice the edge when he was taking those first steps. But as he fell, he crunched up into a ball like an armadillo. And when he landed on the floor, he bounced and rolled as if he were a brown-colored tennis ball. His fear turned into excitement as Percival came to a stop. Wow, that was so much fun, he thought. I should try that again sometime. 
Then he slowly started on his way to find his owner. As he was slowly walking along, he saw in the distance a white furry friend with blue and red stripes. Percival called out, Hello there, have you seen my owner? I'm kind of lonely and could use some treats. There was no answer. So Percival called out again, Hello! He continued walking slowly towards his new friend, and as he got closer, he noticed something. Though guinea pigs don't have great eyesight, they do have a keen sense of smell. And something didn't smell quite right about this white with blue and red striped friend in front of him. And then Percival realized why his new friend wasn't a friend after all. They were his owner's socks, and they were kind of stinky. Percival quickly scuttled away and went out the bedroom door into the hallway. Wow, he thought as he looked around. The world certainly was big. Should I continue? It might take me months to find my owner here. He summoned up his courage and continued slowly on his way, sniffing at the walls the toys left on the floor, and staring at the glowing bulbs shining up higher than he could see. Just then, something orange and striped with big paws and angry eyes jumped right in front of him. He froze, just like his mother had taught him, and hoped the cat didn't see him. Mummy always warned me about cats and how they aren't very nice, he thought. Hello there, little guy. My name is Fanta. What's your name? I don't think I have seen you out here before. Are you lost? Purred Fanta the cat. Percival let out a sigh of relief. Oh, hi, Fanta. Nice to meet you. My name is Percival, and I am looking for my owner. Have you seen her? No, not recently, but I only look for my owners when I am hungry, and I already ate today. Why are you looking for her? Well, I was kind of bored and a little hungry, and I thought it would be a good idea to go look for her. And so far, I am having fun exploring this big world. Can you help me? Sure. Just keep going in this direction until you come to the kitchen, Fanta said as she stretched. What's a kitchen? asked Percival. The kitchen is where the humans all go to eat and talk and where they feed me. You will know it's the kitchen because the floor is smoother. Percival had thought that what he was walking on now was kind of prickly and made his feet a little ticklish. Okay, I've got to go now as I am due for my afternoon nap. Nice to meet you, Percival. Thank you, it was nice to meet you as well. Fanta walked away elegantly, as cats often do, and Percival continued in the direction that Fanta pointed him in. Well, I've already made one new friend on this adventure, and except for smelling those stinky socks, I'm having lots of fun so far, he thought. Percival kept walking and walking, past mountains, which were really chairs and couches, through forests, which were plants, and almost got lost inside a deep and dark cave which was an overturned boot. Just as he came out of the cave, he heard a loud shrieking sound, and so he froze. Oh, I hope whatever is making that sound doesn't notice me, Percival said nervously. 
Oh, oh, oh. Suddenly, from high up in the sky, a yellow blur magically landed in front of him and squawked. Hello there, little fellow. Where are you off to today? Have we met before? Why do you look so frightened? Um, hi. Yes, uh, I don't think we have met. My name is Percival. Can we be friends? Why, of course we can. And by the way, my name is Tweety. Percival was relieved. Tweety, maybe you can help me. I'm looking for the kitchen because that's where I might find my owner. Am I going in the right direction? You certainly are. You are almost there. Just a few more steps. Well, maybe not a few more steps for you, but you are really close. Percival, feeling a little tired from all the adventuring and exploring, decided that it would be best that he quickly continue on his way. Otherwise, he might need a nap and miss his owner. Well, I best be going. It was really nice meeting you, Tweety. I hope we have a chance to talk and play another time. Sure thing, Percival. I always have time for my friends. And off he went. Percival could see how just beyond the mountains it got brighter and brighter the farther he walked. He was getting excited to finally arrive at the kitchen. Though he had only been walking for less than an hour, it felt to him like an eternity. He had seen so many large and wondrous things and smelled some good and not-so-good things. Then he finally came upon what he thought must be the kitchen. The ground looked completely different, shiny, slippery. So he summoned his courage and put one foot forward, and then another, and another, until all four of his feet were on the kitchen floor. Wow, he thought. The ground feels so smooth, and I can walk so fast. So he walked, and he walked, and he walked, until he came upon a large black mountain. It was so large, he couldn't see past it. But then, it moved. Percival was scared, so he froze, hoping that the mountain would not see him. The mountain let out a large yawn. Percival tried really hard to disappear by standing still, but he was shivering so much he was sure the yawning mountain saw him. And then the mountain spoke. Well, hello there, little one. Let me give you a sniff. And then this large, rubbery-looking thing touched Percival and gave him a lick. My name is Booger, and I am a dog. What is your name? I don't think I have smelled you around these parts recently. With a sigh of relief, Percival introduced himself and told Booger all about his adventures and why he was outside his home. Well, Percival, I know for a fact that your owner is not home. Today is Saturday, and she is always out playing soccer. Without me, I might add. Booger looked a little disappointed. She sometimes comes home late, and I'm not sure this is the best place for you to wait for them if they come rushing in the door. Oh, maybe you are right. I am quite small, Percival said. I've had a great time so far, but... I am getting a little tired. Maybe it's best I go wait for my owner back at my house, except I'm not sure which way to go. Don't you worry about that. Just crawl on my back and I will deliver you right to your home. Thank you, Booger. That would be very nice of you. Percival slowly climbed on top of Booger 
and off they went. Everything looked much different when you were riding on the back of a dog, and you got places much faster as he arrived back in the bedroom in a fraction of the time it took him to leave. It looks like your home is a little too high for me to put you inside the door. Are you okay here on the floor? Percival, feeling really sleepy, mumbled, No problem. Nice to meet you, Booger. Thank you for the ride. I think I will just close my eyes and... Percival fell right to sleep. Percival, how did you get out? Are you okay? Did you get hurt? Are you hungry? Charlotte picked up her guinea pig Percival off the floor, checking him on the top, the bottom, and basically all over to make sure he was okay. I'm so sorry I left you alone for so long, but I had a soccer game, and we won, and I was the star player, and of course we had to go out for pizza afterwards. She gave him treats, pet him, brushed him with her doll brush, and told him all about how much fun she had playing soccer and eating pizza. Percival was happy, full, and content. And that's the end of this story. Good night. Sleep tight. (laughs) 